I'm Jen. Nice to meet you. This is Reagan. Hey, Reagan. Oh, yeah. Like at 6 a.m. when we were up. switch to go from one amazing place to another. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds terrible. Um, I mean, that wasn't even a question. I was just curious because you all seem like super chill each other. I mean, that's um, what a lot, of, uh, a lot of time and fans will do. Yeah. It goes one way or the other, you know? Right. I, and I feel like repetition in interviews is so exhausting, so I try yeah. to, to swerve it and make sure that I do my homework. Great, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so with the, the press, you know, that they sent us for you guys, um, the recent album, Under the Lights, you guys wrote on the road and tested songs out on audiences as you were touring. Um, tell me about that process. Does it differ from what you usually do when you're writing albums? or um, And if it is different, did it work better? Were there challenges? Did it, you know? It's basically what we've always yeah. done. Okay. Um, this one, I think, was a little different in that we were sort of writing as we recorded. We'd like have a weekend off and like Kelly would have two songs and so we'd go and record that. Um, and then, you know, the next time we'd have a couple more, um, you know, someone would bring a couple more songs and hopefully we'd have toured on it a little bit. And were there any that got booted because of a performance? Oh yeah, we try out, we try out stuff all the time. And you're like, not this yeah. one, not right I'd again. say that one of the other big differences is this record we were touring nationally. Yeah, right. And previously, the other ones we were playing in the Bay Area at Terrapin Crossroads, which is Graham's parents' place. So we were kind of more local in writing, and this one is more like, okay, you're on, you're in the van for five hours, and then you're playing, and we're doing that in the, like on the East Coast and in the Midwest and whatnot. And so it's more, we're just it more like really on the road. And <laughs> yeah. like doing something, doing a given song in front of an audience, you know, out of out of ten shows, you know, six or seven nights, like mm -hmm. you get a sense of how how it should go. How the audience, you know, responds. Yeah, you get you get more yeah. response than when it's our friends and family. Right. 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 These roll to the studio, and you kind of have we already have an idea, a clear picture of the two, instead of just trying to piece it together from rehearsals. And stuff like that. Right, and what one music scene in a city will take in is sometimes vastly different from another city, just depending on you know kind of what they're super supportive of at the moment, and you know yeah. what what is dominant in that area or yeah, whatever. Right. So. Um, since you brought up Terrapin, I'll, I'll do this one next. Uh, you guys played all over the place last night, collaborating with headliners, studying in, playing your own shows, um, and then you've been on an extensive tour for a while. Um, so with that kind of schedule, do you do you anticipate being able to maintain that forever, or is this super hustle for the time being your road to the next place? Good question. Yeah. 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 I mean, we, <laughs> they're like, how long do we have to do this? Let's talk about it. <laughs> But honestly, like we tour a lot, but it's not as much compared we to, get to go a lot home. of bands. We do yeah, we do home. get to go home, and yeah. we try and keep it like you know some time off, and then we go, yeah, we go hit it hard for a while. Yeah. I just so. I saw going home means playing every Sunday, like yes, keeping that uh, up for yeah. five years, which is in incredible and super loyal. Yeah. But at the same time, it's still hustling. Like yeah. you're still playing. But there's no breaks. <laughs> yeah. The spring, 
the, in the spring tour we had the bare minimum you could have done was five and a half weeks and, and, you know, and make every in and out. Most of us were you know traveling like with family or something before and or after. So it was like that was a haul. Right. Like these yeah. two week runs are nice, but we'll do a couple weeks here or three weeks or something, go home and play some music at home and then and head out. It's, it's it's a way to recharge. And yeah. and yeah, I mean when we're home it's like we're playing it's not always just us. Right. You know, like like I'll play with whoever else, you know, who's around. We have a cool community of musicians where like at Terrapin on a Tuesday they'll right. just throw together four or five just random musicians and be like go play and mm -hmm. we'll never play together in that combination uh and that like it keeps it fresh you know right. honestly and i don't know i live a mile from terrapin so i'm my wife works there my mom runs the place like you know like it's <laughs> kind of home too together. like and it's turned into that for, for everyone hopefully so oh, yeah. um and i know yeah just whenever someone needs you know bass player hopefully they call connor and they need guitar player they call me and they guitar player and singer they call me it's that sort of thing where we can just, yeah, I don't know, have a... I've heard that a lot this meeting. festival season, Forever. just supporting each other's individual, you know, solo careers and, and trying to be mindful of different opportunities without any kind of, you know, that, like, undercover, you know, arguing and things about it. And I think that's really cool that um, bands can, you know, fall apart, come back together. It's not fall apart, fall apart, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Separate, come back together do their separate things so it's it's yeah. always good and refreshing to hear that you know. recording her solo record soon yeah so, uh, <laughs> uh, you know you, you learn so much from other people so yeah. it's so important to keep you know ideas fresh and, and, and right. keep that learning going you know and pick up bandmates add instruments yeah. things like that how many how many groups are doing that lately um speaking of i've had more players good. he's like he's a, he's a, he's going in the bubble yeah um, well, exclusivity doesn't really serve anything positive but, you know, right so, so, like playing doing our own things and playing with other people just does nothing but better us as individuals and, and allows us to bring all that back and bring the people we need back and, and yeah. right and we're not afraid to have guests no so yeah. the more people we meet you know if their style we dig we usually invite them to sit in and it doesn't always happen, but the invite, we, we throw out a lot of invites. Everybody I ran into, I was like, You want to play with us? Hi, Marcus King, I just met you, come to town. You're, you're welcome to come and bring a yeah. guitar. Yeah. Like, yeah. We but definitely it's, apparently it's time. super organic at these festivals, and that's how it happens. Like, yeah, you can just be yeah. sitting, eating, you know, the half a meal that you get in the weekend. Yeah. And if somebody's sitting near you, hey, are you playing later? Like, yeah. do you want to hang? Yeah. And then after hours, the after hours playing, have you guys had any of that this weekend? Playing in camp or, you know, popping up uh, places yeah, in Atlanta. We played it like 2 to 3.30 a.m. So we, right. were, we crashed we were, Maybe tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe tonight. No promises, but. <laughs> um, so speaking to that with this environment and, you know, you guys kind of getting a different look at it because of your dad's investment, his support, you know, reoccurring visits, contribution to the success. After you've watched it, have you had any thoughts as a band of having a yearly event that maybe your name was on or doing a festival? Like, goals, future goals. I think would this cool. be something that, we've had, that would fall in that? We've had people mention it to us that, that we should or will eventually do it. <laughs> eventually, um, yeah. Oh, so you're getting, like, pushed into it? No. Yeah. I'm just no. kidding. It's been suggested. I, yeah, I still think of us as growing and not at that point. I don't but, think we are. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But we like but, to latch on to other people. Yeah. Like, uh, like Twiddle is yeah. their, their yearly festival. We mm -hmm. got to do that this year, Tumble Down, and that was just such yeah. a great experience. And that was such a great example of what it can be. Yeah. Yeah. And be, yeah. be big without being overblown. And at the same time, I, I think bands like will have their own festival in order to invite people to their like home base. Yeah. And we kind of have that going all the time. Yeah. Right. Terrapin. So like people, touring bands will come through Terrapin and play the bar, or if they're bigger, they'll play the great room. And that's when we're there. We're there. So we're meeting them we're and like around, networking yeah. and jamming and Graham sitting in, you know. So we kind of already yeah, have that going. That's the so situation. like, yeah, they're just getting. There's so many. There's you know one big holiday with Halloween jackets. So many bands are yeah. are really you know strategizing and trying these things out. And of course, like you said, you feel like you're fresh, but there's always is it an idea like is right. it you know a future plan so and, and i knew with you having yeah. the, the involvement well, here through family right, if we right. got probably point, been like hey do you like area, this yeah <laughs> like we could probably do something like that yeah, yeah. if we got here. to that point but like yeah. yeah there's just so much already at home like yeah that would like, be we're excited cool. for hardly 
strictly bluegrass in San Francisco. That's like kind of it's kind of like the biggest hometown the, festival yeah, that we like, just got that we would always to. go to, and now yeah. we're playing. It, you yeah, know? so it's there's really exciting. you're calling all your high school day. people like, hey, yeah. I didn't make the reunion, but you can see me here <laughs> being awesome. <laughs> but literally, literally see you later. <laughs> No, you can't have free tickets either. Does that remember what you did? Um, all right, and then the last one. You guys mentioned on your website bio that um, your songs intend to tell your story to your fans and let them into your world, you know, for two or three hours. Um, while that's an incredible opportunity to extend to your fans, do you find transparency in the industry to be risky? Whether it be, you know, security risky or positive negative feedback in your overall, like, mental well-being risky, you know, because... People are, are mean and yeah, crazy, sure. and I'm sure I, that you are not. These two could talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> be honest. <laughs> well, and I, I think it is important to be honest because, especially now, you know, the second part of it is other artists are, are seen battling this and seen having these negative, you know, endings because of things like that and not being able to maintain and separate from, you know, what their music is. And it started as something organic and something, you know, out of love from you guys to your fans that's taken advantage of in a way that you know is detrimental to your overall you know band happiness and your well-being that i mean how do you how do you avoid that like kind of what is your well, what is your line what is, about so, with social media yeah, it's yeah. really difficult yeah. but you have to present a perspective on yourself right uh, you, you have to use it as a tool to like like it's it's not super transparent like in the traditional sense like i'm you know no one's putting out their deepest, deepest, darkest secrets on social media. They're presenting the like happy face, you know. And, right. and you know, but with someone like you, someone they would find it. you and find those, you know, deeper, yeah. darker things. Right, That's which it hasn't happened, but like, you know, we know Brent, like Holly from Twiddle, like just gets savage constantly because they've got a backlash because they've gotten big. But you right. know, they're successful, so they can just be, you know, they can.